Well, let's talk about this now with Natasha Sangaridis, who's Associate Director at Freedom From Torture. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, there have been so many different legal challenges uh, against the Rwanda asylum plan. Um, what, what does this legal challenge actually attempt to do? So this, in this challenge, we are waiting for the court to really make a ruling on whether it's possible for the government to be returning or sending um, people claiming asylum to Rwanda to have their claims processed. So it's looking at the, the legality as to whether we can send people overseas to have their claims heard in Rwanda as opposed to here in the UK as we have done um, historically and as is in line with, with international conventions that we've signed but up I mean, to. Is this, is this completely relevant when the government is actually quite literally bringing in, bringing in a, a, a law at this current time and if they can't get a law through the majority of all over 65 that would be quite something. Um, is it is it even going to be relevant or is this just about speeding up that process because we know they've talked about trying to send a a, a plane to rwanda perhaps this autumn and we, we all remember that night when we saw the plane on the tarmac and then one by one people were taken off absolutely i mean the whole scheme the whole idea about sending people to rwanda is just a highly immoral cash for humans scheme which I'm is sorry so wait a minute highly immoral cash for humans scheme yeah, because that, no, that's no, no, that's the people smugglers' mm. business, getting people on dinghies in France. Absolutely, you know, no one's arguing with people smugglers profiting from what is a, a extraordinarily, you know, painful situations for people. Um, but at the same time, the UK government is out trying to outsource its responsibilities to third country states without having the necessary procedural safeguards in place. Um, and that is a cash for humans deal. They are literally well, paying Rwanda to do their dirty business. <laughs> well, that was, that, that we have a duty of care to people who are genuine asylum seekers, but actually that duty of care doesn't mean that we have a duty for them to live in this country. They just need to be in a safe country. Rwanda has been deemed a safe country, including by the United Nations, including by the EU, who uh, uh, have also sent people there. Uh, in which case, it's not doing a dirty business, it's, it's simply acknowledging... Uh, that, that there is a pull and a, draw, a pull factor for Britain, which is now untenable with the number of people coming and arriving through illegal methods. Um, if people are going to be in a safe place, you don't have a God-given right to make your life in Britain if you weren't born here, I'm afraid. That's, that is the simple fact of the matter. We're not supporting people to go and be you know, tortured in death camps. We're talking about people going to Rwanda. What's really important to understand about all of this is that, you know, back in the 1950s, in the wake of, you know, the Second World War mm -hmm. and the Holocaust, states came together and made a decision and signed up to various mm -hmm. conventions, one of which was the UK Convention. And in that convention, we solemnly swore to the fact that people who are in need, who are fleeing atrocities, mm -hmm. will be able to apply for asylum yep. in countries without having pre-authorization. Mm -hmm. And what this, you know, what this deal is trying to do is basically say, these things are irrelevant, we are going to send them to a third country um, and, you know... A third, a third safe country. So people arriving from a safe country, France, place where I'm going to be going next week because it's such a lovely place, um, hoping not hitting any riots there. Uh, people arriving from a safe country, France, having travelled through a number of other safe countries across Europe to get there, we're going to send them to another safe country in Rwanda. And, and this, your organisation, which I know just wonderful work for people, genuine victims, but freedom from torture, I mean... This isn't human trafficking or torture. This is just a simple matter of practicality. Don't have enough space for 50,000 young men to turn up on our shores on dinghies after paying four or five grand to people smugglers. We don't want them. We don't have space for them. We can't afford them. And we're going to make sure that they're safe. But they're going to be in Rwanda, not here. I don't see what the issue is. Thank you so much for your kind words about our organisation. You know, the people that are coming through our doors have experienced absolute horrors. Yeah, the vast know, majority of people arriving on migrant boats haven't, though. Well, the vast majority of people who are having their claims determined in the UK, mm -hmm. it is found that, you know, three quarters of them are found to be have been at now, risk. 
This stat is used all the time. And and that, that no, no, no. This stat, that, that is, an, that is that's, not, a more that's not a fair stat. representation. I would love to have a more recent stat. But what's happened is the government has all but decided to freeze claims. When this government took charge, the asylum backlog stood at 7,000. Oh, I'll tell you, no, no, Natasha, on this, you and I will agree. <laughs> abject incompetence at the Home Office. I've gotten, I'm 100%. I think it's absolutely appalling. I'd sack every single person there, apart from Swella Braffman, uh, the Home Secretary, who I think is trying to get a good job done uh, against her civil servants. But genuinely, that this stat, this like, well, most of the people who get their applications sorted, A, they only actually work their way through the really obvious easy cases. The vast majority of these young, young, young men, and they are young men, they're arriving without documentation, claiming wherever they're from. They're economic migrants. They are not. They, I mean, yes, they want to come here for a better life and good for them. But you know what? We get to choose who live in our country now, and we don't want these people. I'm sorry, we don't want these people. They're not an added benefit to us as a nation, and we don't want them. And we don't have a duty of care to five billion people around the planet who want to come to Britain for a better life. I don't know why you think we do. I mean, it's interesting that you use the word we, because actually, you look know, when polling. you look at the different polling that's happened, there is, you know, 65% of people polled recently, just a couple of weeks mm. ago, said they wanted people to have access to a fair hearing. A yes, fair of course we want people to have access to a fair people, hearing. Again, in the polls are showing that people want people to have access to safe routes to come to the UK. Yes. Nobody, and Ukraine, there is not Hong one Kong. poll that has found that it would be a good idea to send people to Rwanda or that's, that it would be that's not true. That's abandon, not true. I've seen abandon our international regulations. Rubbish. I've seen plenty and of polling showing just that. Here's another polling question, Natasha. Would you like a big barge with 519 year old men from who knows where? They threw away their documentation on the on the dinghy on the way over here from the, from France from a safe country. Would you like them to ship up and live live at the end of your road? Because I'll tell you what the answer will be to that. Even your your Islington dinner party. Uh, you know, cohorts would be going. Um, oh no, not not round here. Oh no, we. Oh, of course we should. We should definitely have these people, but just not round here. You, you can ask. Depends whatever question I mean, you ask. Without a doubt, we know from people coming in and out of our therapy rooms every day how important it is for people's rehabilitation that people mm. are housed in the community. We know the devastating impact that happens to people who are housed in detention facilities, in contingency accommodation like barracks, and now in barges. You know, we keep coming up with these ridiculous performative, um, you know, ideas which which is try the government is using to try to show you know cruelty. But actually, what needs to happen is we need to get a grip, make a system that actually works. Why are we even thinking about barges? Oh what yes, we need I agree. To. They should be processed. They should be processed at Dover and sent back processed. to France. But there we are. Get people. Well, if you know, the stats show that if people were processed, the people coming here have a genuine need. No, it doesn't. No, that's and just the ones that get processed, and most of them they just roll out the time. And over after three years, they're given they're given the right to stay here. They haven't actually been judged. That this is this is a complete fallacy, and people keep spouting this to us, and it's simply not true. Um, so, Natasha, it's been good to talk to you. I, look, I know your charity does good work for people generally victims of freedom uh, from torture but really i do think charities need to work on the people who are genuine victims and not be waving the flag for a bunch of people who are just frankly trying it on